is Steve Wiley. I'm CEO of uh, Innovega. Um, Innovega got started with a uh, mission to develop uh, smart glasses for a smartphone. And uh, sort of glasses with a capital G, the idea that these glasses were going to be as conventional and familiar as sunglasses, literally. Um, we got started about five years ago at the inception of uh, this event, in fact, 2010. And we've been showing up every year offering uh, updates on our, on our progress. Um, there we go. We, uh, and, and at the time, 2010, we sat around, a couple of colleagues and myself, at a restaurant and the proverbial table and empty napkins. And with this uh, mission in mind, you know, glasses for smartphones, we started laying out a feature list. And we filled out multiple napkins and said, you know, in order to get the, just a pair of glasses that are going to be that cool and that high performance, you're going to have to, A, deliver a lot of features, important features, and B, probably do things different. Um, Ori Inbar, who you all know, published a report earlier this year, a really good report, Smart Glasses uh, Market Report. And he listed for a consumer pair of smart glasses what he thought were the eight, ten most important features. And uh, I thought back, and he, he basically covered everything on our list and, in fact, did a, a better job, more concise and more succinct than I did. So I'm going to run through his features. These are the features that we intended to nail and have, in fact, done so. So at the top of his list, he says design and form factor is vital. These have to be stylish Oakley Ray-Ban glasses, period. No excuses, no story. The second is size and weight. A pair of glasses weigh an ounce and a half. They don't weigh 10 ounces. They don't weigh two pounds. So we took that seriously. Our glasses are sub two ounces. Uh, cost, you know, consumer product or consumer cost. This has to be scaled and sold for a few hundred dollars. Um, our translation of that is, as glasses, if you keep them light and you keep the components small, that all relates to cost ultimately. So tied back to glasses for smartphones. Uh, battery life uh, always been a, an issue in the industry. And there's a lot of attention being played to the type of uh, uh, screens that you would select in the electronics and drivers and such. But a big component is the optics that you use. You can lose at least 50% of the power just through inefficient optics. So we intended to use extremely efficient optics. I think it was said this morning that, that content is, uh, is king. So again, smartphone applications, 20 million of them available to you. The smartphone gets more powerful every year, clearly moving in directions of 3D, you know, HD, 3D, VR, AR. Field of view was uh, on his list. I might have put it higher on the list. But field of view drives uh, experience, it drives engagement, it drives excitement and functionality. If you've got a big digital canvas available to you, you can put a lot of stuff on it, make you very efficient in, in your work day. Um, our, minimalist, sorry, our minimalist glasses are about 50 degree field of view. We have a sort of VR light glasses at 70, 75 degree field of view. We've built glasses at 120 degree field of view and or multiple field of views. Number seven, contrast and brightness. I think his comment here is that we're looking for next-gen display panels or next-gen projectors. So we use an OLED panel, a million to one contrast ratio. And last but not least is a resolution. All our glasses are full megapixel, full HD. So 1080, 1920, progressive in our uh, VR light glasses. Uh, we knew we'd have to design brand new optics, and we were sort of expert, not me, but my, my pals, <coughs> in uh, refractive and, and diffractive and holographic and most every optics approach. We'd have to do something different. So we added to that feature list, and it was our napkins, another napkin that said, if you're going to do new optics, there's a few things you should add. And one of them was to have a single optic for any field of view, any resolution. So completely agnostic to the application or even the type of glasses in mind. The second was to eliminate this, the bane of the industry, eye strain, headaches, et cetera. And it's this so-called virgin's accommodation conflict. We've eliminated that. All the other virtual displays have that to deal with, and it's really troublesome. And the last is to have a natural integration of a person's prescription. 50% of consumers have a prescription. 70, 80% of Asians have a vision, vision prescription. So we felt that had to be naturally integrated. So the conclusion of all these multiple napkins is that we would need a brand new optical solution. And furthermore, several months down the road, we decided that separating the glasses from the optics was the only possible way we could get there. So this is how we did it. 
So a pair of glasses. Will that play, just rotate around a little bit? That's the glasses that we're building today. It's our prototype. It weighs about one and a half ounces. Um, it's, f I say, four times the number of pixels. It's four times the number of pixels per eye compared to a Google Glass. So in total, it's eight times the number of pixels as Google Glass, 10 times the field of view, weighs an ounce and a half. But our system, we've separated the optics from the glasses. Our system is two piece, a pair of glasses. And the second piece are the optics. And David described how um, with optics that are three inches in diameter, he can get a 180 degree field of view. Our optics are 30 thousandths of an inch. So by floating an optic, a lens, 30 thousandths of an inch in size on the surface of the eye, you get a 180 degree field of view or any subset of that at any resolution. So we drop it into a modern contact lens, soft contact lens. 160 million people wear contact lenses. 20% of our consumer target markets are already wearing contact lenses. Our system, therefore, is a two-piece. And one simultaneously, has, uh, one simultaneously has one's world in focus and also the media that's playing in the glasses in focus and available. So two-piece system, you wear them both together. If you wear the Op, if you wear the contact lens and no glasses, it just acts like a normal contact lens, corrects your vision. Where are we now? <clears throat> we're building prototypes. Uh, every year we build a new set of prototypes. One on the top is 50 degree field of view, weighs about an ounce and a half. It's a uh, megapixel. The second one down below is about 70 degree field of view. We call it VR light, thinking the idea that VR is obviously an important category and we're going to make it very mobile, very accessible. The lenses themselves are in clinical trials, heading to an FDA approval. Every contact lens has an FDA approval. We have people wearing our lenses uh, you know, full time presently. And last, uh, we're looking for partners. Uh, we're a technology developer, a technology enabler. So we're looking for partners to build glasses, mobile electronics, mobile device partners, and, uh, and uh, contact lens partners. That's well underway. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'd have time for a couple of questions if you would like them. There will also be time f for questions from everyone if there's a, just a couple of questions. Anyone got a question? Are they actually optical see-through, or they are occluding? Yeah, these are occluded. We built a projection-based see-through system. So we built a projection-based 90-degree see-through system. These small panels we're using here on those two form factors are both occluded, placed just above the line of vision. And can I demo them downstairs? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Okay. We're, uh, we're building them out now as we speak. Thank you.